What's up guys, this is Adam from 3dmodelswall.com Welcome to another Maya tutorial and today we're gonna create a digital clock and it's gonna be counting real time in Maya and we're gonna have this uh, pretty cool rig we're gonna actually create that's gonna use uh, like a geo and it's gonna be changing this uh, geo uh, counting you know the way you want and you can really customize this however your situation is just there's just a few things we need to keep in mind when we're doing this approach and I know what you're thinking you're thinking probably why not to use like an image sequence of a timer that is just a 2d timer and that's actually could work too but I want to show you guys this way how to do it in 3d so all Maya if you want to have like these numbers you know like the camera fly through them or, or they rotate or there is something going on with these numbers and you really want to show the depth of it so I can show you how to do that here in Maya and without further delay let's get started okay so before we get started first a very important thing is we need to download the font that will allow us to create this type of digital clock so let's go to Google and then let's just type font and then you can see here there is a 1001 fonts if you click on it and then this will allow you to download any type of font you want so let's search for digital and then there is a bunch of them you can if you want to check out and see which one works for you so we can go with this one just click on it and uh, this is a preview basically of what the fonts look like and it looks pretty good and this is the numbers as well just keep in mind that this have a personal uh, user license so you, when you download the font you just want to make sure you're downloading uh, if you want to use it for commercial so using for commercial so we can click on download and then it's just gonna download this uh, zip file for you and then you can install it in your uh, computer if you're using windows or mac there's uh, multiple approaches for that so once it's installed we need to go to uh, illustrator assuming they have an older generation of Maya if you are in this generation you can go and create the type here and then uh, pick the uh, the new font that we download it's called digi digital so for the people that they don't have newer generation of Maya I can show you a different way to get this font so you can go to illustrator and then let's create a text and create eight number eight that's all what we need so let's scale it up and let's go here to the font area and then type digital digital 7 so that's the font we have now digital 7 that's basically it that's all what we need to do in illustrator now you click on it right click and then create outline so this way uh, we can export this to Maya and it can import it correctly without any issue and then we go file save as and then make sure here in the save as options you change from illustrator cs5 or whatever illustrator you have to illustrator 8 and then uh, this way it doesn't have any unnecessary things that gonna confuse Maya so it's just uh, outlines click ok ok then we're done here the next thing is let's go back to Maya Okay, so we're now in Maya and then let's uh, go create and then Adobe Illustrator object and then we pick the file and then we can see already the file imported to our scene. So this is what we have now, this number 8. So first let me hide all these other things we have in our scene, we don't need them for now. Uh, and also this is the clock body, so for now we could hide it as well because we don't want to see it and okay so first let's uh, center the pivot and then let's snap it to the middle of the scene holding uh, x and middle mouse button this will allow us to, to snap it to the grid let's make sure it snaps to the middle of the grid okay so the reason I choose 8 is basically it, this 8 allow us to create all kind of numbers we need because the numbers we need basically from 1 to 9 and uh, for this one we're gonna keep all this uh, history so I'm gonna duplicate it and then this uh, let's call it original and then let's hide it okay so this is we always have it in case we want to change the font or we want to do something 
So this number now, we're gonna start with it, and then um, this is number 8, so we could keep it. Now there is something very important before we start duplicating. Uh, you see here, this is all the transforms. We wanna make them all become 0. So this way, when we duplicate these uh, numbers, we wanna, I wanna be moving them so we can e see each one individually. But at the end, we want them to be all overlapping. So in order to do that successfully, you can uh, just uh, take the number back where we want it to be. Then we can go modify, freeze transformations. So now it's zero. So now if we move it, and then we press back to zero, it'll go back exactly where it should be. So that's important. This is just, so this way we can keep things uh, working correctly for the clock. So now we need to basically duplicate this number multiple times, like eight times, and then create the, the numbers we need. So let's start with this eight, so we'll keep it. And then uh, let's move this one, a duplicate, and then let's create number one. So we select faces, delete, 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 delete. So we created the first number now. Okay, now let's duplicate and move this number here. And let's create the number two. So uh, let's delete this one and delete this one. These numbers sometimes get me confused. So I might make a mistake of these numbers. So now three, we delete this one and delete this one. And then four. Now four is gonna be interesting because there's some this this length is not correct for this font. Okay, so let's try to extend it. You know, something that looks reasonably fine. Okay, this is okay. We can keep it like that. They're kind of like matching similar height. Maybe I could raise it a little bit up. Uh, just a little bit to the side. Okay. No one gonna notice. And then let's go to create number five. So five will be... Oh man, this is... No, not this one. Five. There you go. Okay, five and two, there's the most confusing numbers for me to create. I don't know why. And then let's create six. And let's create seven. Okay. And then uh, last one is nine. So I'm just gonna shift it a little bit further. Okay, so this is nine. And then we have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's good. Okay, one thing missing. Let's undo this eight. We need number zero. So let's put this one here. And then this uh, one, we need to have it as a zero. We forgot that one. Okay, there you go. So now we have zero. So this way we have all these numbers. So this is like very important step. You know, we have to have these numbers because what we're gonna be doing now is kind of like we're gonna be uh, we're gonna have a rig to basically switch visibility for every number but the good thing we need to do it just for this one and then we can duplicate the same uh, rig for the other numbers so this way just this one tds part and then after that you're gonna have your digital clock rig working like clockwork okay so now we have all these we could name them uh, ideally we should name them, let's name them, so I'm just gonna give them the actual numbers, oh I can't, okay, so zero, okay now we name them, let's move this one below, not inside it, below it, okay, so now we have all these numbers, let's hide the grid, so let's create a circle, let's go like create, Nervous and then circle And then let's scale it up this circle basically is just gonna be a control uh, To just uh, we're gonna assign a new attribute to it. So now this circle we can call it uh, 
Let's see, so seconds. So seconds is good here. We can keep these numbers here, we don't need to worry about it. This is just for the attribute. So let's create an attribute to it. So let's go to modify and then here add attribute. Okay, so this one we're gonna call it seconds. And we want it to be integer. We don't want it to be float. So because float is gonna have an in-between numbers like 1.1, 1.2. We don't want that. We want like 1, 2, 3. So we click on integer. Minimum is 0. That's where the number. And maximum is 9. And then start at 0. So click add. And then OK. So OK. Give some error. But never mind. So here's the seconds. Now if you middle mouse and then uh, scrub it's gonna go from it's gonna go one increment at a time until nine okay so that's good so now let's uh, start adjusting these uh, guys so this way when we click on one it just shows one and everything is hidden when you click on two three it goes through basically all these numbers so to do that we can do there's multiple ways but the one a really good way to do like set driven keys so we can go to animation and then click on key set driven key click set so set driven keys is basically allow you to uh, have a connection between uh, whatever attribute you want and uh, another object in Maya and then th this uh, attribute will be driving specific animation or keyframe on the object you decide sounds complicated but it's actually really simple to do so for this control we want to load it as a driver okay because we're gonna use the seconds to control everything else and then let's select all these guys and then load them as driven and then let's select them from here and then go to the visibility and then select this control and then click on seconds so basically we want this seconds to drive the visibility of each object so first let's click key basically gonna set keyframe on the visibility for everyone here and then let's select all these guys and then let's uh, let's go to their visibility and then press zero and then click key again okay so now we are at zero nothing happened everything is invisible so that's a good thing so we change that to one and then after that let's select this zero and then hide it and then press key and then just in case let's select all the guys here and press key on them just to make sure we keep things organized and then let's go to one and then let's change it to uh, click on the visibility switch it to one and then let's click key okay so let's see what we got so at zero one okay that's good so now it's uh, switching between those two numbers now we go to two and then the same thing let's click key and then let's uh, hide this guy press key just in case you, should, you always should press key it's good it's just make sure my is registering what you're doing and then on two we're gonna have this uh, as uh, one and then let's select everything here again and then press key okay so let's see so zero one two now i need to go to three so i'm gonna speed through this one this part but we're gonna basically do this exam exact same method we're gonna do for the other numbers Okay, so now you can see we switch the numbers and they switch the visibility. So, th so that's a good thing. You can go back and forth, so, all, so all, everything's good. So now what we need to do is basically we need to put everything now back on top of each other. So that's why we freeze the transformation here. So let's use this one. Then let's close this uh, set driven key editor. We don't really need it. And then let's click on all these numbers and then let's all zero them out. So now 
you can see it's counting correctly. So this is like the hardest part we need to do right now. Or the most time consuming part. Just basically to get uh, this kind of rig working here. So that's good. Now what we want to do is basically we want to duplicate this setup we just created for the another number. So let's uh, first group everything here. And then let's call this uh, seconds. And then part one. Because each uh, digit is going to, we're going to have like two digits per for seconds and then two digits for minutes. And then two digits for hours. Go edit, duplicate special. Reset the settings and then let's change duplicate input graph. Duplicate it and then let's move it. Something like that. And then when you change, it works. So you can select those two guys and then you can have them counting like that. Okay. Uh, so now this is done. So we have the seconds basically done. And then uh, let's create the minutes. So we can create, so here you can see we have part one, part two. So we're gonna create like minutes. It's the same way. So let's go the same thing duplicate special. And then let's move this one here. Now you can see here still saying seconds. So we're gonna change this to minutes, shortcuts of minutes. And then we're gonna change here also to say minutes instead of saying seconds. So we can go modify, edit attribute, and then select this saying seconds, and basically change it to minutes. And it's gonna change here. So now it's saying minutes. And also counting correctly. And let's change this to minutes. And then let's change it to part one. Just to say organize, it's really important because uh, Otherwise, it gets very confusing really quickly. So let's do that for this side. So we have minutes also here. Saying so that's good. And then last thing we need to do is basically the hours. So duplicate special. And then the same thing. Let's change that to hours. And then let's go to Modify, edit attribute, and then hours. Okay, so change that, that's good. Let's make sure we change the group name here as well. And then part one. Let's, let's move it this way so you can always go to front view and make sure everything kind of looks even. You can show the grid. If you want, this looks okay. And then let's duplicate the last one. Put it here. Now, of course, the hours it doesn't go like to you know like nine. There is no like 99 hours in a day. So this is need to have some manual animation. If you, but you're not gonna basically count this many hours, like 24 hours. No one gonna be watching Amaya seen for 24 hours but you can manually like switch these numbers you know whenever you want now for these numbers here especially the seconds i'm gonna show you how to create this to be automatic so you just do like one thing and then it's gonna be automatic gonna keep counting forever for as long as your scene is and for the minutes we're gonna just keep it count until go to nine which is not really the true number of nine doesn't go to nine but because 60 minutes, you know, is the maximum. But uh, we're gonna keep it going to nine. It's okay because we can also manually here change it to the minute wherever we want. But the seconds is we don't want to animate it manually because it's gonna be really tedious. So we're gonna basically work on this seconds now and just uh, automate it so it's become like uh, just keep going as long as your scene is without any issues. So first thing we need to do is we need to make sure our scene is set up correctly for the for the frame rate that we want. So if you're animating in 30 frames per second, that means every 30 frame is one second. But for this case, 
I am animating at 24 frames per second. So this is very important to, to do first thing. So it's 24 frames per second. So that's mean this number zero gonna stay there until uh, when it's come to 24. That's when it's gonna switch to become one. Okay, so let's do that then. Let's key, press S. Sorry, I need to go back to frame one, press S. And then let's go to 24. And then press S again, and this time change it to 1. Okay, so now you're gonna see midway it's switched to 1, and we don't want that. We want it to be exactly at 24. So that's when the graph editor comes in handy. So let's go to the graph editor, and then let's select the seconds, and then switch it to step mode. So this way it will just switch when it's there. So now it should count for 1 second. So that's good. Now we don't want to like keep animating it manually until uh, 9 because you know we maybe don't know how much uh, frames we need to get to the 9 seconds. So what we do is basically we, we create a cycle. So make sure view infinity if it, it's on. So this way we can see and then let's go curve post infinity cycle with offset. So this way it's just gonna keep counting up. But there is a limit of course how much you keep counting. So now keep counting until nine, and then and then after that there is more no more numbers. So so you can see here the seconds going up, but the numbers here doesn't show because that's a maximum. So we want it to basically cycle. Once it's reached nine, and after nine switch back to zero. So let's go and make sure where is nine gonna be. So this is nine, and then this is where we need to switch to the new number here. So what we do, we can do bake. So we can select this channel and then go edit and then keys, bake simulation. And then let's reset the settings here and then scroll down and then do smart bake. Because if you do the regular bake, uh, it's gonna just, you know, like bake every frame and we don't want that. And then important thing, let's change from channel box and then select it. That's the only options you need to do. And then click bake. So Maya goes through it and then Maya baked just where we need it. Okay, so let's see what we got. So there is a little bit in between frames here, but we don't need to worry about this. Okay, so it switched from eight and here become nine and here frame 231 we need to switch it back to zero. So here you just press on zero instead of 10. And then press key. So you can see, and then after that, what we need to do, basically delete all this. And let's see, let's delete this one as well. And then you don't need the, and then let's make sure we're doing post infinity cycle. So now we're just cycling. So now what's gonna happen, is is gonna count eight nine zero one two three four five six seven it's gonna keep doing that for infinity basically so if you have a scene like one thousand something frames it's gonna keep counting every time reach nine zero one two three so that's basically it for this side now we want to make sure something similar happened to this side of the seconds so when it's reached nine and then zero, that's mean need to switch to one. So what would we do? Basically, similar method, we click second, press the keyframe in there, and then we need to go until here says nine. Wait, I skipped it. Nine, and then as long as switch to 10, which is this frame, 231, this one need to switch to one. Key selection. And then the same uh, thing, we wanna make sure we're using, uh, we're using step mode here. Forgot to mention that we need to create also curve post infinity, post infinity and then cycle with offset. The same thing we just did. And we wanna make it count until nine so let's see okay 
so 59 is basically the last uh, the last frame right and then after that when switch to 60 it doesn't really go 60 it goes back to 0 so 59 we just want to make sure this frame 60 let's uh, let's find where it is this one so let's do the same thing let's select this uh, channel and let's go edit keys bake simulation this is the same thing we did before and click bake okay so this is where it is 60 so let's see so here 50 and 60 60 basically need to change to zero right and then let's delete everything here delete everything here and then now it's cycling you can see it's gonna, gonna keep cycling forever so the same thing now you can see it goes two three four five six 59 and then go back to so this is uh, basically how you can get the seconds working for you know here I'm gonna put like 10,000 so basically keep counting forever so that's a good thing now we're gonna do something similar we're gonna do just for one for this one I'm gonna show you guys and then basically repeats for the same thing but it's very rare you're gonna see in the scene gonna be like you know it's not gonna take this is already 800 frames so it's gonna take a really long time to basically have one minute so most likely in lots of scenes it's gonna be just showing like seconds and things like that and if you want things to go really fast you can always animate them manually if you have like a shot that is just like gonna need to show like really fast numbers switching so you can like manually do that but in this tutorial we're just doing like as in a regular clock you know okay so now once once it's reached uh, 59 and it goes to 60 this one need to change to one so the same thing we can go to the minutes click key here and then we can keep going it's very important to press key in the beginning because this way you are setting the time for Maya to know when it needs to cycle okay so now we just want to make sure here is switch to one and let's set key and let's switch it to step mode just make sure we're selecting it correctly step mode and then let's uh, do the cycle cycle with offset so this way you know it's gonna keep going keep going keep going so basically it can keep going and you can always of course you know set the limit on it same using, using the smart bake and stuff like that but this is we're just gonna keep it going because you know it didn't like we have like a 10,000 frame and didn't reach uh, it just reached seven minutes so you can see how long this <laughs> this uh, time could go okay so now that well, we have this and uh, we're kind of happy with it you know it's showing the numbers counting and of course you can like set these numbers now let's say it's uh, 10 o'clock and it's uh, 30 uh, let's see 35 minutes so 30 minutes and then when it's count it goes to 37 okay so we have this one so far it's working you can of course you select these controls and you can delete like we don't really need any of these to be honest you know we, we just need the seconds part you could even hide them if you want but for now you know we just don't need to uh, bother too much with them now let's create these uh, dots that uh, comes in and these are really uh, pretty basic stuff so we can create a cylinder and then uh, let's rotate it x 90 degrees you know and then let's duplicate this and then maybe move it just a little bit like that they always like looks they're showing some kind of angle 
and let's duplicate this guys and then something like this you can always tweak this when we get to the when we add it to the screen and then I select all of them and you can see here there is this rename if you click on it if you didn't see it you just click on this and click rename and then you can click like dot and then it's just gonna name them dot one two three okay so let's take all these guys we just created and then let's group them and then call them like a time you know and then let's center the pivot modify center pivot okay so let's show our scene back okay so let's see where's the clock okay we want the clock the most important one here we don't need the scene so let's hide the scene and just show the clock because we don't want to get confused with uh, lots of environment stuff so let's take this time and then let's move it around let's see let's press F to zoom to frame it okay you can always of course scale this if it's small okay just make sure we don't want to let's see there's a glass in here let's go wireframe and shade it we don't want to be crashing in the glass so yeah as, as soon as they're touching like that it's good these guys we can maybe push them in more you know we want relatively everything kind of like the same level uh, let's scale this one more so make it a nice uh, easy to read for the homeowners so they can read it well okay so that's good let's uh, let me change this to zero just to make sure okay so we need to push everything to the side it's always good to try start with zero zero everything zero just to make sure you know the clock is the times actually fitting and it's not gonna crash okay so now we can change that to one okay so seems pretty good it feels a little bit uh, offside but we can always tweak that like later it's not a, a big issue now to worry about now we just want to get the tutorial going okay so now it's counting and everything is good here okay so next thing we need to do basically uh, let's uh, change the shader on these uh, the numbers to make it look more interesting because that's a very important thing and uh, that uh, clocks you can see like the numbers have a nice like red or, and some kind of glow in it so let's uh, work something like that so let's select oh so we can't just select the current number we have we have to select all the numbers so let's show all these groups we could have uh, give them the material before we start that probably will save us a few seconds but that's okay we just select everything here i'm basically selecting all these numbers because lots of them are hidden and we can't just rely on the ones we're seeing right now okay so seconds part one part two th minutes and then hours okay so i think i got everything and let's also have the dots as well those are important let's assign new material and then shader let's create arnold standard service okay so let's click on here and call it like time and uh, we are good in here so let's close okay and now let me show up my scene because it's very important so now I have the light so light is basically directional light and also I have like in the light uh, like sky dome as well and let's show the scene okay so this is the scene now so let's go to the camera if I can find it okay for some reason my Maya don't wanna switch windows so let's click here or you know what let's go back to perspective and then let's let's just use the perspective camera for now let's turn off wireframe and shaded get like close up like that and then let's render and see what we got 
Okay, so it's done rendering and you can see it looks pretty good. It looks actually uh, nice uh, with the default Arnold without doing anything. But let's just change it to make it look more uh, we, uh, like a flat or like more like a digital uh, font material. So let's select it and then let's go back to time here. Time shader, I mean. And then uh, we can have the weight all the way to 1. And then let's change the color to something like red. Maybe like darken it a little bit and then let's make sure sometimes you need to refresh switch the shader so let's keep it at 5 somehow 6 doesn't texture mode doesn't show the color okay so now you can see it looks pretty good already and uh, very important we don't need these numbers to be really reflective so let's turn off the specular you know and then uh, let's scroll down there's another things we need to do here uh, transmission we don't need to touch it and there's this emission this is actually really good uh, uh, we don't need the geometry here let's close it and this emission basically allow you to create a, like a surface shader type effect so let me uh, go back to the view and then let's render what we have so far of the new color so I can show you the result okay so it's done rendering and you can see uh, so this looks good but it does feel like uh, it's a geometry and we want it to feel a little bit like it's a screen uh, and to do that that's where the emission comes in handy and you want to be careful with it uh, if you go too much you might get things a little bit weird so first let's change the color of it to become the same color as we used and it's now turned off so let's turn it on so as you can see while I'm trying to get on, like guess things are uh, pretty bright. And this is a weight one, you can actually go more than that. You can go like 10, that's just gonna intensify whatever you have. So let's keep it one here, and then uh, delete these layers, and then let's save this one, and then let's render. Okay, so you can see how the emission really start to enhance the coloring, to make it just look more brighter. And then you just want to be careful not to use too much of it because it start uh, these gaps start to close at each other. So you just want to be careful how far you can go with it. I think the glass is hidden. No, the glass is not hidden, but we're just straight facing straight on, so we can't see the reflection. So if we like give an angle like that, let's see, something like that, just to get the light to reflect on the glass, things are gonna look better. And another, let me just reference the grass and then let's do one thing here. Let's tone this down to like 0 0.400 maybe. 0 0.4, we don't need it to be too strong. Because always we can, you know, divide these layers and uh, render them into separate, um, you know, render passes. So this way we can have an after effects or your compositing program have like more glow effect or whatever you want to make it look uh, nice so we, do, we don't want to do too much in Maya we just want to be careful with it okay so now when we change the angle you can see the gr grass start to reflect better and and uh, toning down the weight and the emission is pretty good as well I kind of like this result it's, it's pretty good so this way you guys can you know have like an ideas about how to approach this uh, result and uh, create something good and you can of course use the same technique I just show you here to create some other stuff uh, and other situations so hopefully this tutorial helped you guys let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish a new video feel free to check our website 3dmodelsworld.com for more tutorials and cool 3d assets until next time take care